American Airlines reservations. I'd like to make a reservation to Los Angeles for this coming Sunday the 10th, please. Yes, sir. We do have quite frequent non-stop service to Los Angeles. Well, you could take our DC-7 Mercury leaving from Idlewild in the afternoon at 12 noon. Very Thank you very much. You're welcome, Mr. Sander. Thank you for calling him out. The post-World War II years brought a growing demand for national and international air travel and reliable flight scheduling. Up to that time, manual flight reservation tracking was very time-consuming and unreliable. In 1946, American Airlines installed the automated flight booking system, called the Reservizer. It was an electromechanical system developed by the Teleregister Corporation of Stamford, Connecticut. In 1952, Teleregister developed an improved reservation system called the Magnetronic Reservizer. American Airlines Reservations, may I help you? Yes, Mr. Finchley. You want to get on our DC-7 flagship non-stop to Los Angeles? For what day will that be, sir? an electronic system which included temporary storage using a magnetic drum. Yes, Mr. Finchley, your reservations are definitely confirmed. That'll be on the DC-7 flagship, Los Angeles, non-stop, at the Mercury. However, the airline industry needs continued to exceed the capability of these early systems. In 1953, C.R. Smith, president of American Airlines, and Blair Smith, a senior IBM sales representative, happened to meet on an American Airlines flight from Los Angeles to New York. Their discussion of airline reservation problems led to an agreement with IBM to research and develop a computerized solution. During this time period, IBM, in collaboration with MIT and personnel from other U.S. companies, had been working on the massive SAGE project. SAGE was a computerized air defense system for the Air Force, which became the largest computer system in the world. IBM saw a potential commercial use for their SAGE-related technology to help meet the airline industry's reservation tracking needs. American Airlines and IBM signed a formal agreement in 1957, and the first experimental system went online in 1960. It was based on two IBM 7090 mainframes housed in a special data center located in Briarcliff Manor, New York. It connected 1,500 terminals across the U.S. and Canada. Initial cost was over $40 million, or about $350 million today. By the end of 1964, Sabre was successfully processing over 7,500 reservations per hour. It helped reduce reservation processing time from over an hour to a matter of just minutes. This was a revolutionary improvement in the reservation processing field. The system underwent numerous improvements over the years and is now part of the Sabre Global Distribution System, owned by Sabre Corporation and used by travel agents and companies around the world. The following IBM film, created during the early development of Sabre, describes the experimental reservation agent set as it looked in 1958. The modern Sabre system is being proposed. This system enables the airlines to give rapid and accurate service to their customers on all travel arrangements. Complete information is literally at the fingertips of the sales agent. New reservations are made in a matter of minutes. Alterations to previous arrangements are accurate and complete. And information regarding the availability of all space is known. The customer is no longer left waiting for information. The experimental Sabre system is made up of these basic machines.
Data transceivers are used to transmit the information between the agent set and the 650 RAMAC computing system. Information flowing between the transceiver and the 650 is synchronized by means of a specially designed input-output synchronizer. The data processing system consists of a Type 650 magnetic drum data processing machine and the RAMAC disk storage unit. All programs which are called out by the different agent entries are stored in RAMAC. Here too are the important records that the agent needs for handling calls, the complete name records for customers who hold reservations, and all pertinent records for every flight in the airline system. Information and questions given to the system at the agent set are rapidly transmitted to the computer. The computer in turn tells the sales agent if space is available. It provides information for alterations to previously made reservations and assures the agent that the passenger space has been subtracted from the right inventory and that it will not later be confirmed to another passenger. Four basic modules make up the agent's set. First, there is the file of air information cards with a card for each of the most frequently requested destination cities showing the flight schedules on a point-to-point -point basis between the agent's city, in this case New York, and the destination city. The front side of the card provides a maximum of 16 routings to the destination, while the reverse side shows the schedules for a return trip. Punched holes in the bottom of the card provide for automatic reading of the card identification number. These cards are placed in the air information device. Two of the three columns of lights at the left tell the agent of all space availability shown on the card. The column closest to the card shows space available on American airline flights. The second column indicates space available on other airlines. And the light in the column on the far left is moved by the sales agent to select the flight wanted by the customer. The special function console includes the air information device and the necessary control buttons for the operator, date buttons, number of seats being requested, and functional buttons for entering and requesting information. Variable data, such as names and telephone numbers, are entered through the keyboard. The agent also uses this keyboard to request certain data processing actions, including the retrieval of passenger name records. This experimental system has been operated under test conditions by a number of American airline agents. The tests show that the system can be operated with ease, efficiently and accurately. The agent at the set has had only two days of instruction and one day of operating experience. Let's listen in on a typical call. American Airlines Reservations, Missetti. Uh, I'd like to make a reservation to Los Angeles for this coming Sunday the 10th, please. Yes, sir. We do have quite frequent non-stop service to Los Angeles. For example, you could take our DC-7 Mercury leaving from Idlewild in the afternoon at 12 noon. You'd arrive Los Angeles non-stop at 535. Oh, that would be fine. Uh, could right. you give me a reservation on that? Yes, sir. We're definitely confirming a reservation for you then the afternoon of the 10th, 12 noon from Idlewild. Good. Did you wish return reservations as well? Yes. Uh, I'll be coming back on Wednesday the 13th, and I'd like to leave in the morning sometime. Well, we Good. have our DC-7 Mercury leaving at 9 in the morning. We'd arrive at Idlewild nonstop at 7.45 in the evening. Could, could I have a reservation on that? Yes, fine, sir. We can also confirm your return reservation the morning of the 13th at 9 o'clock. Very good. And Thank may you. I take your name, please? Yes, uh, my name is Gibbons, G-I-B-B-O-N-S. All right, sir, your initial? C-W. All right, and what is your office phone number, Mr. Gibbons? Trafalgar 9. Yes. 6178. Any extension there? Yes, 240. All right, sir. And may I take your home phone as well? That's uh, Manhasset 5. Two five six six. All right, sir. We'll be holding your reservations for you. Then we'll say until six p.m. the evening before, which will of course be the ninth. Okay, fine. Bye, Mr. Gibbons, and thank you for calling, America. Thank you. You're Bye. welcome. Bye. With the availability information adjacent to the air information card, the agent can quickly guide the customer to an available flight.
thereby avoiding the embarrassing delay of recommending a flight only to find later that no more seats are available. Now let's see how a reservation is changed. American Airlines reservations, Miss Eddie. Miss Eddie, this is Mr. Snyder speaking. Yes, sir. Uh, I hold reservations to Chicago on your 12 noon flight of August 7th. Yes. I also hold your 5 o'clock on the 12th return. I see. Uh, I find I can get out a little earlier, so I'd like to change the return space on the 12th to your 3 o'clock if you have a seat. All right, Mr. Snyder. Well, let me check the 3 o'clock for you, sir. Just a moment, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for waiting, Mr. Schneider. Our records do indicate that your reservation is confirmed on our 12 noon flagship to Chicago of the 7th. And right now we can change your return for you and make it definite on our DC-6 air coach, which leaves from Chicago at 3 and arrives the Bordia nonstop at 6.55. Oh, fine. Our records also do indicate that we are holding these reservations for you until 6 p.m. of the uh, evening before, sir, which is the 6th. Is that still going to be convenient for you? Yes, that'll be fine. Do you have my uh, uh, phone numbers? Uh, yes, we do. And the office contact we have for you is WA58080. The home phone number is Port Washington, PO71279. Oh, that's fine. Very Thank fine. you very much. You're welcome, Mr. Schneider. Thank you for calling, America. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. -bye. Notice that there is no longer any need to keep the customer waiting a long time while a phone call is made to check his record. The chief area of competition between airlines is customer service. The Sabre system provides for prompt, accurate service to the customer by making the sales agent self-sufficient, independent of any other agent in obtaining all the information she needs to satisfy the customer's desires in the coming jet age.